We can catch up with the star of the show for Scotland now, Finn Russell's on the line. How are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. I'm good, you? Finn, I bet you are. Um, did you feel me touch you as you walked in to the change rooms at half-time? Did you feel the energy or not? I think I must have, yeah. <laughs> what was what was said at half-time to make such a dramatic turnaround? I guess you've probably been asked that question a million times already by now, but yeah. can you give us some insight? Basically, what we, what we need to know is, did you try and have a scrap with Gregor Townsend? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no um, I think oh, at half-time, obviously, things weren't working for us, so we'd... Um, they were seeing me kick a little bit more, I suppose, or and I didn't. I thought, now nah, we can't kick it because we've not had the ball. We need to run it more. But then I was saying in the first half, whenever we tried to run it, we were just getting, we weren't accurate, we were getting hammered, and they were just flying out of line at me. So um, I was kind of stuck in two minds whether or not to think do we play a territory game and kick it, or do we just um, do we just keep the ball in hand and have a go at them? And I think I suppose England got kind of caught being so far ahead, they almost switched off a little bit. So. Um, I think the, oh, the one of the messages Gregor made at halftime was just go out there and win the second half. So whether that was by three points or uh, you know or thirty points, um, but we we just we were just targeting a win in that second half to kind of come away and say we weren't good in the first half, but we had a better second half. So um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't know. No, mate. Well, look, I was there. I was pitch side, and if we're speaking frankly, I don't know what it was like as players on the pitch there. You know, I've been there many a time where it's been yeah. quite embarrassing. But you're there. The way that England played in that first half. What, what were you thinking? Were you thinking, "Holy fuck, we're fucked here"? You know, like because you can just it, they were just relentless, weren't they, with the way they were playing? And they said they were going to play like that. That was in the in the media in the build up. So, was it as a player? Did it almost feel like an impossible task? Yeah, I think. Um... Oh yeah, they came out quick. Obviously, they've seen they were going to come out quick. So, kind of, I, I can expect them to come out quick, just not as quick as that. Um, you know, anytime they got the ball, they pretty much ran through us. Anytime we had the ball, they were just smashing us. So we didn't really have anything. They were, they were, I thought they were outstanding in the first half. Um, but I suppose what we were about me first on the, after the first half and during the first half, I was just, I was almost just a bit lost. I didn't really know. What happened? I think everyone was like that. We we're kind of shell shocked, but um, we still, I don't know, we still kind of had some belief that we could go out there and we still hadn't, well, we hadn't really done anything. We hadn't thrown a shot at them yet. We hadn't defended well. We hadn't done anything. So we kind of thought if we, um, I suppose, if we get our game back together, we can still cause them a lot of troubles. I, I think um, first half, we still did create a few chances. We just weren't accurate. Well, not chances, but we still created a few edge attacks almost. And, um, I thought it would have been a bit better and we'd have been a bit more accurate. We could have put them under a bit more pressure, but um, we were just all over the shot first half. Yeah, now, uh, Finn, as you, as you know, I'm, I'm a very proud Englishman and I know you're a very proud Scotsman, but I've got to ask you this question. Why the hell do you raise your game so much to play against England? Because the last two years, you've literally pulled our pants down single-handedly. Do you love playing against England that much and do you hate us that you, it brings out the best in you? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think our second half... Um, this game especially, I, I think England kind of didn't put as much pressure on me. He had a little bit more time on the ball. Um, and boys, we just kind of got in our shape better and more accurate, I think. Like kick chase and everything we did, we had, had more intense and more um, more accuracy. I thought it was just good. But, um, yeah, I was playing against England, you know, number, number two or three in the world, I think. So, um, it was great, you know, it's great to go against these teams against the best guys in the world. And there's obviously a little bit of rivalry there with England and Scotland, so. They're great games for a, for a Scotsman to go and play in. So I like, I like it. <laughs> Maybe it does bring the better, best out in us. So. And do you have a, I heard you had a bit of a conversation with Eddie Jones after the game. Any any banter from Eddie, or was he with a was, was he respectful for once? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was fine. It was just brief because uh, he was he was heading up to give an award out in the aftermatch, and uh, and I was just standing at the bar, Greek. Um, so just a brief chat as he was walking past. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't too much. What did he say? Uh, how are you going? <laughs> and then, uh, what did you say? Very well, Eddie. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd have been better for I'd have been better for one again, but we'll give you it. But um, no, it was uh, yeah, it was fine. I just had a quick chat, and he was getting on. I thought I was getting on it, and enjoying France and stuff. Um, so just yeah, kind of beef chat about about rugby and stuff like that.
Yeah, I'm just getting honoured. You make million pound a year Lamborghini. Yeah, it's all right. It's hard to say. <laughs> uh, but, but, Aston Martin. Uh, mate, it is an Aston Martin. Yeah, we should give them a shout out. I saw that. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> so just you personally, apparently you played with a broken cheekbone. Finn. I mean, I played a few times with a broken cheekbone. No biggie. But uh, for you, is that true or not? Uh, I fractured it, what was that, two weeks Two weeks before? No, I mean two weeks before. The week before the fans game, when I played against uh, La Rochelle. Oh, so, that's when, so when you missed against Toulouse. Yes, yeah, so when you missed yeah, fans yeah. game, was it because of the ch- uh, fractured cheek or concussion? Yeah, yeah, fractured cheek. So, wow. Um, I had um, yeah, I got a fracture. I'd have been what, four or five weeks before. Five weeks before, I think. Yeah, I remember content like four weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I fractured it. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk about France. And you, obviously, the move uh, over to Paris has uh, suited you. The way you play, the way the team plays. You know, that 4G pitch that you've got at the La Défense Arena. You are absolutely loving life in your Aston Martin, the, the high life of Paris over there, aren't you? How good's it been for you in terms of moving over there? Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. It's good. It's different to, to Glasgow. I do love I'm back in Glasgow just now, actually. Um, but, no, it's different to Glasgow um, for me. I think Glasgow was, was great. But um, I think moving to Paris, everything that there is, um, the clubs call it, the facilities are amazing. Um, and the stadium's incredible as well. So I think it's got everything like that for me. It's, the city goes all the time, so there's always stuff to do. Um, so I think as well as well as rugby, like the lifestyle out with out, out with the rugby has, has been great for me. So I'm enjoying like my life in, in rugby and out with it. So Finn, we mentioned how well you're doing in in, in Paris, in France. I spoke a little bit about you know this six day turnaround that you had and couldn't play in that France game. We now know that it wasn't concussion, it was uh, a cheekbone. How was it for you personally? You knew, obviously, signing for Paris that that was going to be the case. Do you have any thoughts on that now, knowing what happened during the Six Nations, you missing that France game and probably not being in the best shape possible having any rest weeks? Um, no, I think it's fine. I think, um, I, like, you know what you sign up for when you're, when you're going, well, when I went to go and play in France, so... I kind of knew that I'd play more games. I'd play between between the tests and stuff. So, no, it wasn't too bad for me. I, like I said, I knew I knew what to expect. So, um, I think mentally I was in a different mindset. I think when I was at Glasgow, when you um, when you play a few games, you got to get a weekend off. So, I, I felt towards uh, the end of my career at Glasgow, it was, um, you're almost you're not you're not looking forward to the weeks off, but you know you're going to get one soon. So. Um, it's almost it's hard to say focus if you're if you're on and off the whole time. You know, if you're playing two games and you get a weekend off, or you sometimes you might play four or five games and get a weekend off. So it was different. It was hard to stay for me and stay focused uh, week, week in week out. Whereas over here, it's um, you know I've got maybe ten games in a row. So I'm thinking I'm going to play till the end of the season. Now. So I'm in a mindset where you play well every week, week in week out until the end of the season, um, rather than thinking all right, I'll have maybe three big games and. We've got an easier team coming up, so I'll get that weekend off. Um, but just good for me. Good stuff, mate. Well, wish you all the best for the rest of the season, uh, especially in the Champions Cup quarterfinal in a couple of weeks against Toulouse. I know they did you over up there in the, earlier in the season, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went off at half-time with injured cheeks, so hopefully I'll stay on, the, stay on the pitch the whole game this time. And that's why Racing lost. There we go. Thanks, Finn. <laughs> Finn, cheers, mate. Is it the cup's, it's fucking home. It's home again. Oh, God, I'm loving it. Cheers, Finn. See you soon, mate. Thank you. Good lad. Shit, mate. That's hell of a boy. Late. Mate. Hell of a bush as well. Hell of a bush? Yeah. Is genuine, he, is yeah, well, French? He's, yeah, he's, no. yeah. It's he's, very he's, French, that, yeah. isn't it? Has he grown he's, it in France? or? Well, I hadn't seen it. Yeah. I tried to look at the weekend and just to see uh, what was... How did you try and look? Well, just to look at the... I, I know. Okay, yeah. Matt, I know. Yeah, you do know. <laughs> you yeah. know?